Today, I opened up an amusement park in my 100x100 Minecraft world. I spent an entire week to fill it with over 25 roller coasters, mini games, and stores, but right now, it's just a big empty void in the nether. So I want to start out with a mini game that is going to be giraffe themed. Probably the most popular thing in my 100x100 world is this tall and funny giraffe, so I gotta give the subscribers what they want before my comments turn into a bloodbath, which is why this mini game is a bloodbath. Here, contestants will compete in a giraffe's habitat, the jungle. Took me a while to realize that mistake, but scattered throughout our yellow, brown, and black wool blocks. You'll fight against the other teams to collect as many of those as you can to build the tallest giraffe, but at the same time, you can be stolen from. Brown is worth more points, so do you risk or defend, and that's what's fun about this game. I tested it, there's a lot of flaws, but I'll fix them later. Now the reason I'm building this amusement park is I want to see how creative I can be. Like I have this 100 by 100 area and the sky is the limit. That takes us on to the next game, Eggsport. This one is based on the TV show Wipeout, specifically Wipeout for the Wii with a bit of a twist. Right now I'm building a short parkour area using crimson wood to mimic big red balls. Three players will be trying to cross over it safely, delivering eggs to the other side. But to make it harder, on this blue bridge there will be one player trying to shoot them and stop them from getting the eggs to the other side. Since the delivery team only has nine stacks of eggs, they have to be smart about how many they bring with them because if they fall, those eggs have a brutal death in lava and you can't get them back. Then to add more complexity, there are different difficulties of jumps. So let's say you make this Neo jump, you have a protective glass barrier allowing you to get to the end without being shot. Now why is it eggs we're delivering? They're just easy to get. It was really easy to get chickens down here and then they'll lay eggs for me. But funnily enough though, it actually kind of turned into a strategy, is if you had gotten knocked down, you could throw eggs at the shooter so they would get distracted and they wouldn't be able to shoot the other person as easily. This game is just pure chaos and fun. So we've just built two mini games, but I said we're building an amusement park. Nothing about this screams amusement park though. I've been taking inspiration from an old Minecraft map, Funland, and I think I found what I need. CONCESSIONS! The main food source we eat in this 100 by 100 world is golden carrots, so why not have a store based off of it? Now, since pigs eat carrots, I thought it'd be fun if you could go inside a pig's head to get the food. Was I successful in making this look like a pig? Well, any monkey would go ooh ooh ah ah yes, but it isn't as good as it can be. We are quite limited on what pink blocks we can get in this 100 by 100 world, so our only option is pink and purple terracotta. Technically, we also have pink wool, but like, would you really trust the structural integrity of a store made out of sheep hair? The store is open and is selling golden carrots, so we can move on to a custom spleef game. It's probably the most well-known mini game in Minecraft because it's very simple. You're just trying to mine the floor underneath people to make them fall off. Normally this minigame uses snow, but we can't get any of that so we have to get creative, which wasn't a bad thing as the new idea is 10 times more efficient if I can figure out how to make it work. So instead of snow, we will be using basalt generators. With a haste one beacon and efficiency 5 pickaxe, basalt can be insta mined just like snow. Even better, when you are done with this game, the generators will reconstruct the platform for you. The ice, lava, and soul sand produce the basalt, then these pistons pick it up and it gets pushed by another set of pistons. To make this game more interesting, I wanted to add a second layer, but for some reason the redstone for it just kind of scared me off, so I'm moving on to the next mini game. Well, this isn't much of a mini game, rather a statue. A statue dedicated to a fire monkey because this amusement park is sponsored by Monster Legends. To celebrate, Kalen and I are going to see who can build the best statue based on the monster, Fire Kong. Now, Monster Legends is a free-to-play mobile RPG with loads of strategy. They have over 900 monsters to collect, which is what I love doing. This one is a panda and I named it Doug. Uh, this one too. Actually, all of them are named Doug. So far, Colin's statue is coming together quite nicely, while mine, uh, moving on, even with so many monsters to collect, Monster Legends still adds crazy new monsters every single month, this month's being Brainladon. I also named it Doug. Now, Doug can fight other monsters in real-time live duels to gather trophies, win rewards, and hit the top leagues. Coming back to our statue, Colin's Fire Monkey is coming together quickly, and mine looks like a crab. Now, for a limited time, if you use my link in the description or the QR code on screen, you can get 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, and 10 gems to give you a head start on making your powerful team. And you also get this epic monster, Kaori. Now, one of the unique features in Monster Legends is the YouTuber Island, where you can find monsters based off your favorite YouTubers. Not me, though, but here's the thing. If we get enough downloads, maybe, just maybe, that'll be enough to convince Monster Legends to add me to the game. That I think that would be really funny if we got that. So, help a man out, download the game with the link in the description, claim your rewards, and have some fun with it. But do you have what it takes to become the number one monster master? 
I clearly don't because look at Colin's statue. It's beautiful. I kind of gave up on mine. It's an elephant now, so Colin wins. That was good fun, but now it's time to make a Strider race. I haven't done anything with Striders in this world, even though there's just tons of them just chilling there. So I thought it'd be fun to make a lava racetrack for them. But this Strider race is also kind of odd. See, I did some testing beforehand because I want this to be a fun mini game, but at the same time, I also want it to be a mini game that you can just yell rigged at. When Striders are going up flowing lava, they are really finicky to work with, which kind of make this a chance based game. To add to the rigness, the pathways I'm making are just kind of random. You go down a drop, across some sporadically placed lava, and there's even a part where you just start suffocating. My favorite part I really want to show you is this little jump pad here. I've been practicing redstone trying to get better at it, so it was really fun to put this launch pad design together all by myself. The pad launches you just fine, but the button ends up powering these pistons too long, which kind of blocks the players behind you. Right now it goes for one and a half seconds, when I only want it to be powered for like a fifth of a second. We'd need to find a redstone contraption that can shorten it. Monostable circuit! Monostable circuit! Oh my gosh, I know the monostable circuit. I'm not trying to sound smart by saying these complex redstone names, but for the past week, me and RecRap2 have been building secret bases on the Lifesteal SMP. Nearly every time he built a secret door, he showed me how to build a monostable circuit, which basically means this machine can turn a really long pulse into a shorter one. I hope RecRap is so proud, because I am proud of myself, and this thing now works amazingly. Now most of the lava was placed down, I moved the striders to the lava pen, this one is practically done so we can move on to the next minigame. This one is based on Colin's banner shop in the sky so it'll look very similar if I'm good enough at building it. While I built this floating tent, I commissioned Colin to make 10 banners for me, which fun fact was actually the biggest purchase he's had since, uh, uh, I don't know, forever. Those 10 banners will be randomly dispensed, and the four players will try to recreate that banner as fast as they can. So yeah, I think this is our first puzzle minigame. But you can't have a puzzle minigame without a maze minigame. It's not any ordinary maze though, because this one is going to be filled with plagiarism. The whole gimmick is that this is an invisible and ever-changing maze. We will get this effect by making the floor out of fence gates, carpets, and a ceiling. Then you can come below, and one player will make a route by opening and closing the fence gates. It doesn't work as well as I want it to, because you can always walk left or right, the fence gates only really block you from going forward and back. But some of you keen viewers might remember this game from Stampy's Lovely World, and I don't want to say steal, but I did have big inspiration from it. And uh, Stampy, if you have a problem with this, I'll totally remove it. You just have to beat me in an invisible maze 1v1. Now while I built the maze, my friend Colin was building a mini game of his own. Building an entire amusement park in a week is like a lot of work, especially with school. So I told him I'd give him 20 bucks to make me a mini game. And here it is, Colin's closet. This is based on the closet that he has in his house that can cycle through different sets of armor. So for this mini game, a randomly put together set of armor drops down for not even two seconds. And you have to try and remember and recreate that set of armor as close as you can. Do it the best, you win. Colin is still adding the finishing touches to the game, so that gives me time to finally build our first roller coaster, and it's obviously giraffe themed. I'm making this whole thing out of wool, so it's an absolute fire hazard, but it matches well with the overworld giraffe. For this coaster, you first ride up the giraffe's neck and then go down a tree. Then you'll go up some slime block launchers that take you to the top of this giraffe, and good grief, the redstone took forever to build and time. I built and rebuilt, and I nearly destroyed this giraffe to get it to work. But once you go up, you go to my favorite part. When you start going down, the giraffe, if you look over the fence, you'll see a giraffe that is lying down. Do you want to know why it's lying down? Because it died. This amusement park isn't as squeaky clean as you may think it is, okay? You can't trust this place. For this next mini game, I'm heading back to the Strider racetrack. The track makes a loop, and I want to put a tower in the middle of it, specifically Trapdoor Tower, or Tower from Hell. I did absolutely no testing beforehand. Like, if there was ever a mini game to yell rigged at, it's this one. Inside the tower is just a bunch of randomly placed trapdoors, and the goal is to climb up. You do that by opening and closing these trapdoors to jump on and around them, but what makes it difficult is others can flip the trapdoors you were on. I thought this would be a game of parkour and skill, but when I actually got to testing this one, I realized it's trying to get people distracted so you can sneak up. It can be a frustrating mini game, but 
that's why I love it. Right next to the tower is going to be our next mini game, but it's going to be hidden behind a lava waterfall. I know it looks like a volcano, but that's just because halfway through building, my brain just decided to go, I am building a volcano. But yeah, it's still a lava waterfall. I really want to show you what's inside though, because I just think it's so creative. Since this room is a secret VIP room, it kind of reminded me of secret clubs that were held during the prohibition. People would show up and illegally drink alcohol, so that's what I want to simulate. When you enter, you go up to the bar and get a random potion. That's your alcohol. Then you come to this table where you simulate playing poker. Each person takes a turn pressing this button, making paper drop out, and that kind of simulates them taking their turn like playing their card. But there's a 1 in 9 chance a piece of red wool comes out, which represents someone cheating. And you want to know what you do to cheaters? Yeah, kill them. So once the red wool comes out, you splash your randomly given potion and it's just an all out brawl to the death. This mini game is not the most complex, but I just had fun with it. So much, in fact, I made a sequel. See, crime is on the rise in this amusement park with people smuggling in alcohol, so we need the police. I put together a cop car for the next mini game because there's two teams, cops and criminals. The objective of the criminals is to drop down and find a fire resistance potion, which will help them get into the secret VIP area. I made 15 specifically marked chests, and each round, one of those chests will randomly have a fire resistance potion in it. To help the criminals, they get to be invisible but once they find the correct chest and splash themselves with fire resistance, they have to put on a gold helmet. The other team, the cops, they know where the fire resistance is hidden and their goal is to kill the criminals. One problem I dealt with is if the police know where the fire resistance is hidden and their goal is to kill the criminals, what stops them from puppy guarding it. But I decided it's fine because if they do guard the chest, the criminals know which one it is, so maybe you guard a fake one. This game can just be so chaotic and gosh, I love chaos, it's so fun. So far, I have to say this is one of my favorites. That brings us roughly halfway through all of the attractions. This is what this place used to look like and here it is now. There's still a lot of work ahead of us, but I took this time to build a little observatory. It's great, because now I can observe all the empty space we need to fill. Like here, this is an empty spot great for a coaster. This one is based on the ride Puff the Magic Dragon, which is a kid's coaster from my state's amusement park. It's a basic ride where the dragon goes up and down, up and down, up and down. I want to do a coaster like that, but I don't want to do a dragon. So for inspiration, I turned to Google. It was not helpful. I looked up things that go up and down. Do you wanna know what the answers were? Potato plant, onion plant, radish plant, carrot plant, and raw metal ores. What in the world? Now we can't make a plant-based roller coaster because it won't let you in the nether, I tried. So it looks like we are stuck with raw metal ore. How does that go up and down? This coaster to be raw metal ore themed is going to be based on the mine shafts with a big pile of ore in the center. To add to the fun while going around, you can listen to the Andy Griffith note block theme. Then just for fun, I built a little shop that only sells glow berries. Over here, I wanted to start work on a different kind of maze, but as I was getting ready, I noticed these chests over here, which inspired the next mini game. When my friends and I mined out this entire area for the amusement park, we put everything in these chests. A simple-minded man would just organize these chests by himself. A smart man tricks others into doing it for him. I built a little farmer's market and then a semi-truck that is backed into it. Each round, everyone is given a random assortment of items that they take and try and sort into these chests. Now, it may not be the most fun, but it gives off those Mario Party vibes, which, you know, is kind of fun. Sometimes. Sometimes. So now for the different kind of maze I promised. It's entirely made of glass. The entire point of this maze is to just frustrate. So before I even place down the maze walls, I'm making a fake route that looks like you could follow, but no, why would I help you? There are a few pathways you can follow for a bit that lead you nowhere. To add to the frustration, right when you get near the end, you have to follow a path that takes you away from the exit. The floor is entirely made of glass, and I even broke some of the glass blocks just to make it look like there's a path, but it isn't. This is truly a mess. One thing this amusement park has been missing is some OSHA required bathrooms. But those are pretty easy to put together because, well, it's a bathroom, not the Pantheon. We'll put it out of stone and if we're feeling like it, we'll throw in some mossy stone bricks in there because heaven forbid I pay someone to clean this area. You can see it's not much. Just like here's the men's room, here's the ladies room. I actually don't know what it looks like, so moving on. Uh, monorail! For my guess, we are roughly three-fourths the way done, but just look how much we've built. Oh yeah, and Tyson made a dunk tank that is duck-themed. That's actually been built for a while, I just forgot to tell you. Oops. But to get a good view of the entire park, I put a monorail around it. It's incredibly simple, it's just a minecart that goes around and has a few different stations to stop at. 
As I was building it though, I noticed there's still this unfinished spleef game. <sighs> Fine, I'll complete it. Honestly, I was a coward about this redstone. Yeah, it did take a while to get the timing right, but come on, it's like two lines of redstone. But I'm still quite proud, this is probably one of the least scuffed games. What's scuffed about it though is if you fall, you fall into church. There's not like any deeper meaning to this, I just thought it was funny if you like lost and then boom, church. This got me into a finishing mini game spree because I also finally finished the strider race. I've been getting a lot of lava from my lava farm, but it took way too long so I started to steal it from the local strider habitat. But this got me thinking, I have some empty space right next to the exit. So in true Disney fashion, I'm gonna put a gift shop at the exit. To make it look more like a strider, I decided to use some red nether brick, which I was able to get because I already have a nether wart farm. I haven't used red nether brick that much, and as you can see, there's a reason I don't. When I first wrote the script, I tried to make it like, yeah, the Strider gift shop, it doesn't look the best, but it's alright, but I'm coming back to it, no. This is dumb. It doesn't look good. I didn't decorate it nice. There's nothing charming about it. But there's just a point where you're like, you built something, but you just don't care about it. So you're like, I just, I don't even want to try bothering making it look good. So I just moved on to working on red light, green light. Yeah, I couldn't get through an entire minigame park without dipping into some children's game. I spent some time AFKing at the copper farm to get myself some spy glasses. That's basically the game done. Players start at the other side of the amusement park and try and make their way across it without being spotted. If they can get to the main person, they win. The spyglass is here to help them find people, but I also just love using them, zooming around. Now I really enjoy these mini games that take you around the amusement park, so the next mini game is turning the entire amusement park into a dangerous mini golf course. The main idea is that you take turns throwing ender pearls to get you closer to the hole. The first one is pretty simple. The next one is a bit more challenging being over the giraffe minigame. The third one is quite far away, and the last one sends you right into the middle of a roller coaster, which, if it already wasn't obvious, is incredibly dangerous. Thing is, this amusement park has a dead giraffe, I doubt they care. But in case someone gets hurt by the roller coaster, we need a place to hide something. You know, every mini golf course I've gone to has that fake tree or building with a small door for employees to enter it. I hope you know what I'm talking about so this whole thing makes sense, but if you don't, complain about it in the comments. No matter what, I like it, I find it really charming, and it's also incredibly useful. Throughout this entire project, I've been putting together quite a large chest monster, and you can't open up an amusement park with your junk at the center. So this is where you can hide all of our junk, which really just makes the main area look nice. Now that the amusement park is all cleaned up, it could be opened. All we need is an exit. And you know what? It was really nice building this exit. This amusement park plus the video took forever. But look at this. This is just so cool. There's so much going on. And thank you to Monster Legends for sponsoring the video. Once again, the link is in the description. Finally though, we can light the nether portal. I'm free.